This is lesson 7-3, which is trigonometric functions and real numbers. Our essential question is, how is the unit circle related to trigonometric functions? So the first question we're looking at is using reference triangles to evaluate sine and cosine. So part A says, what are the sine and cosine of the angle 2 pi over 3? So what we have to know is we have all the different coordinates around our unit circle. So at 2 pi over 3, we have the coordinate negative 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. The other thing we can think about is that this is a special right triangle where this is 120 degrees, so our theta is 160 degrees, or sorry, is 60 degrees. So that's 60, so that's 30. And this is one of our special right triangles where our short side is 1, our long side is square root of 3, and our hypotenuse is 2. But when we're on the unit circle, everything has a radius of 1. So if we divide all of that by 2, that's going to change our radius to 1, the long side to square root of 3 over 2, and the short side to 1 half. So that can be where you get your x and your y coordinates for that point at 2 pi over 3. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be square root of 3 over 2. So sine of 2 pi over 3 would be square root of 3 over 2. And cosine of 2 pi over 3 would be 1 half but we know that we're negative with cosine in the second quadrant, so be negative one-half. And again, this is your y value and this is your x value. So remember, sine is y and cosine is x. So that also can be found from your coordinate points on your unit circle. Okay. So the next part, this is not in the written notes, but this is another example. What are the sine and cosine of a negative 45 degree angle? So we need to remember when we're going around the circle, going counterclockwise is positive degrees, but going clockwise is negative degrees. So negative 45 degrees would be the same as saying 315 degrees. So if we look at the point value, so we know that this is going to be a 45, 45, 90. So let me draw my triangle. So this would be 45, 45, 90. So the special case with 45, 45, 90 is that both of the legs are the same value and then the hypotenuse is square root of 2. But again, if we want our radius to be 1, we can... Um, divide each of our legs by square root of 2. So that's going to make our hypotenuse 1, and each of the legs would be square root of 2 over 2. But we're in the fourth quadrant, so that means our y value is going to be negative. Okay, also the coordinate points would be square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. And I'm running out of space. <laughs> we'll see if I can fit that. Negative square root of 2 over 2. There we go. Okay, so sine of negative 45 degrees. So our sine would be our y value. It'd be negative square root of 2 over 2. And cosine of negative 45 degrees would be our x value, so it'd be positive square root of 2 over 2. Okay. So the next question is using the Pythagorean identities. This comes from our right triangles. We know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But if we're on the unit circle, that r is 1. So if this is our x squared, this is our y squared, and this is our r squared, it's, it's connected to our Pythagorean theorem. So sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1 because we're talking about the unit circle. So it says if sine of theta what is sine of theta if cosine of theta equals negative three-fifths and the angle with measure theta is in quadrant three? So we want to draw a picture here. So we are in quadrant three. There's theta. 
And if it tells us that cosine, we know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent to theta is going to be 3. Our hypotenuse is going to be 5. And I know that in the third quadrant, both my x and my y are negative. So I'm going to label that as negative 3. I can use Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus b squared equals 5 squared. So it'd be 25 minus 9. So b squared equals 16. So b is 4. So I know that side is 4. I also know it's going to be negative 4 if I'm talking about the coordinates because I'm in the third quadrant. So then it says, what is sine? So sine of theta would be negative 4 fifths, opposite over hypotenuse. And so this right here is an identity. So anytime we see sine squared plus cosine squared, we know that that's going to be equal to 1 because of the identity. So this is called the Pythagorean identity. So we could also, using our triangle here, we could say sine squared plus, oops, plus negative three-fifths squared equals one. So that would be sine squared equals nine, not equals, keep writing that, plus nine twenty-fifths equals one. So if I changed 1 into 25 25 and subtract 9 25 from each side, I'm going to get sine squared equals 16 25 which would reduce to sine equals 4 fifths. So that kind of shows the Pythagorean identity. Okay, example 3 says, what is tangent of negative 5 pi over 6? So I put in a unit circle here. You can see here is 5 pi over 6. So this is positive 5 pi over 6. So if we think about what would negative 5 pi over 6 be, it's going the opposite direction. So I'd be right here. So it's going to be the same as 7 pi over 6. And tangent, so tangent when we're talking about the unit circle, so tangent is y divided by x. So we're going to use this coordinate point right here. So tangent of 5 pi over 6 is going to be um, it's going to be our y, which is negative 1 half, over our x, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. They both have 2 as a denominator, so I can cancel that. And they're both negative, so that's going to turn into be positive 1 over square root of 3. And then we don't like to have radicals in the denominator. So we need to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So we end up with square root of 3 over 3. So that's 5 pi over 6. So then it says, what is tangent of 3 pi? So what we have to think about, I'm just going to draw a picture of a circle here. So this would be 1 pi. 2 pi is all the way around the unit circle. So 3 pi would put me back right at this location right here, which is the same as pi. So we've talked about coterminal angles. So tangent of 3 pi is the same as just saying, what is tangent of pi? So again, it's our y value over our x value. So our y value at pi is 0, and our x value is negative 1. So 0 divided by negative 1 is just 0. Okay, so our last example is says, what is, so evaluate the secant, the cosecant, and cotangent of a 135 degree angle. So here's a picture, 135 degree angle, here is our coordinate points. So we know that's our x and that's our y. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine, cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So sometimes it's helpful to find those first, and then we can flip them. So if I find cosine, cosine of 135 is just my x-coordinate, so it's negative square root of 2 over 2. So that means that secant of 135 would be negative 2 over square root of 2, 
but we don't like to have radicals in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by square root of 2. So that would be negative 2 square root of 2 over 2, and the 2's cancel. So I get negative square root of 2. So that would be secant. And then cosecant, I actually don't have to do that work again, because we can see that our sine value would be square root of 2 over 2 as well. So that means that cosecant would be positive square root of 2. And finally, cotangent. So cotangent is, so tangent is y over x, cotangent is x over y. So it would be negative square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2. Well, these values are the same, and we know if we have the same number divided by the same number, it's equal to 1, so this would just be negative 1. Okay, so that is talking about um, trig values and the unit circle um, and real numbers. So let me know if you have any questions about that.